Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video I'm working on the checkered board pattern cutting boards. The checkered board pattern is easy to make because all the pieces have to be exact same size and so I just need to set up the machines one way and cut along those lines. My whole design process can be summarized into this particular sheet with overlapping numbers and I'll explain that in the process. The first thing we need to do is figure out what would be the width of each uh, checkered board piece. I usually use the maximum that would allow me after planing the wood and in this case I kind of planed these boards uh, thinking I was going to make them into a single um, wood cutting board but then I decided to use them for the checkered board pattern, but because I already planed them, I am down to about 4 to 4.1 centimeters of width. So I'm going to use 4 as the, uh, as the measurement for the size pattern. The next thing we need to figure out is how many pieces do we want to have along the width and along the length of each board. And since I'm a golden ratio fanatic, I use that one to figure it out. The three numbers that I found work are 5 along the width, which will automatically make the length to be 8, 6, which will make the length to be roughly 10, and 8, which will make the, uh, the width uh, or the length roughly 13. And the reason I say roughly is because there is always a, a rounding error, as we can see right now in the calculator. So if I have 5, then my length is technically 8.09, so I kind of use the 8 for the nice even number of the squares. Similarly, if I use 6, it is going to be 9.7, so I bump it up to 10 squares. And if I use 8, it's going to be 12.9, which is, again, very close to 13. Uh, now, you might be wondering what happened to number 7, and this is what happens. If I use 7, then I'm going to have to use 11 along the width, and the board will technically be smaller. So I kind of uh, <laughs> don't like to make things small than they should be, and therefore I kind of currently omitted it. Not that I cannot make it, but I'm going to abstain from it from now. Uh, so now that we know each uh, board and each, uh, how many pieces are in each board, uh, we simply figure out the total number of pieces. Uh, so the 5 by 8 board is going to require 40 uh, squares, uh, the 6 by 10 is requiring 60, and the 8 by th 13 is going to require 104 for a grand total of 204 pieces. Now making one is good, but I always have the idea that I should make more than one, so I figured I should make two of each board, and that means I'm going to have to need 408 pieces. Next is measuring my wood. And I always need to add a little bit for the saw curve. Whether I use the table saw, the band saw, or the jigsaw, there's always going to be a little bit of material that's going to be lost forever in the form of sawdust. And I need to factor that one in because that limits the amount of material I have for my per -uso. Uh, for example, we know that this is about 4 to 4.1 centimeters. My table saw blade is about 3.5 millimeters in thickness. So technically, I could be using 4.5 centimeters to figure out how many, how many pieces I can get out of this board. Next is measuring wood, and that's, you know, very simple. Simply we take the length and the width, and we divide each by that uh, 4.5 centimeters that we determined earlier to come up with how many pieces each board can give us. I already did this ahead of time. And for example, for the uh, 26 by 41 piece, the one that we just measured, uh, we, when we divide that by 4.5, we get five nice long strips and nine uh, along, the, uh, along the width for a total number of 45 pieces. And when I did that for each and every piece, I'm getting 218 from the maple and similar number from the cherry. And that is 436 pieces, which are way over what we need. 
it's always good to have a few extra pieces just in case something happens and just in case our wood isn't exactly perfect uh, for example this one has a nice crack here in the center so i would be able to use this side and probably just a sliver of the other side and the reason i say sliver is because the opposite side as those little crevices that uh, we saw in the earlier video are unsuitable for a cutting board. Similarly, on the long piece of cherry that I showed earlier, there is a big uh, splinter right here that makes this section completely unusable. So it's always good to make a few extra pieces. And if they're left over at the end, I can simply make coasters or small candle holders. Now that we know the design, the size, it's time to crank up the machines and get going. This brings an end to this week's video. I must say not everything worked according to plan. For example, when I was cutting the maple pieces on the bandsaw, I found out the bandsaw blade was deflecting more towards the piece and my target of 4 centimeters now got reduced to 3.85, which is not a big deal. I mean, it's only 1.5 millimeters of difference. The cherry, on the other hand, for majority, the bandsaw was deflecting away and I had extra material on the cherry. So that was kind of weird behavior. Uh, so this is when the markings come into play. So the long mark represents four centimeters of width. The short mark represents uh, 3.85 centimeters of width. And next week when I glue, 
I'm gonna be gluing them on the short side. The extra material on the long side is gonna be removed along with any glue squeeze out and also even out any uh, misalignment of the wood during the gluing and clamping process. Maybe not to that particular extent, but you get the idea. There's always gonna be that little minor variance and that extra material is going to allow me to remove it safely and have that same uh, square uh, width that I need. Next for me is actually figuring out the most optimal way of gluing the wood so that I get my three different sizes without wasting too much of the wood itself. I mean, there's always gonna be some wastage, but uh, I want to minimize it. So that means me looking at every single board and looking for uh, dense scratches or any checks that I cannot use, things like this, for example. And I have to figure out, can I use it? Can I glue it? Can I use it in the form of imperfect edge on an outside piece? So those are all the things that I need to do. And that means looking at every single board closely. Uh, I'm gonna end the video here. If you liked it, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified of my next video release. And also follow me on all social media channels. All the links are down in the description.